with somebody that contacted we yeah. I did not. Well, this is you we, got, we got three non-workers. Everybody's mind not working. You guys. Eighteen. Eighteen. Come on. No. Okay. You guys ready? I'd like to welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Guyman City Council, January fourteenth, two thousand twenty. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Nathan Jenkins from the Ministerial Alliance to the prayer. Please stand with us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this place that we can call home. We just ask that you would give us guidance and direction so that your will might be done. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Mr. Alvidros, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim, do you have another, Jim, do you have another mic? Mr. Edwards, you might have, you might have something to say. Yeah, there's, there's three of them that aren't working. If you pay your electric bill, there you go. <laughs> Call this meeting to order. Item two, attendance roll call. Living good. Here. Peterson. Here. Swager. Alvidras. Present. Egger. Present. Hog Hoffman. Here. Petty. Here. Mr. Mitchell. Here. Item three, public comments and announcements. Well, Mayor, with your with your indulgence, I'd invited Brian Mitchell and. Uh, my mind just went blank. Justin, anyway, Justin Carter. Justin Carter. They've got, they want to come up and talk for a second. Yep. If you guys come so up, we're going to let you go first. Yeah. You want order? I mean, you guys can do it either way. No, come right up here to this okay. to this podium, and that way, when you get through, you make you can leave, you can All run, right. and cool. get out of here. Good evening. Appreciate the chance to be here to visit with you tonight. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Mitchell. My family uh, owns the Northridge Shopping Center and the uh, Northridge Cinema 8. Uh, we purchased that in, uh, I can't believe, I was looking the other day, purchased it in December of 1997. And uh, interestingly, we, I was at a uh, Amarillo High football game uh, with my nephew uh, a few months ago and ran into Keith Schaefer. And of course, Keith was one of the original developers with Martin Ramirez and uh, Larry Fields, and, and so it's funny because we've actually almost owned the shopping center longer than they have. And of course, I kidded him. I said, why would you have had Larry Fields? Why would you want an attorney as a business partner? And uh, <laughs> hi, Larry. Hey, David, how you doing? <laughs> so anyway, but since we've owned the shopping center, uh, we have invested in it. We've completely redone the uh, facade, the front facade. And basically every space we have remodeled in the shopping center, either us or a current store, and also building the shopping and building the movie theater, except the grocery store. That's the only spot that hasn't been remodeled in, in, since we've owned it, and I guess for nearly since it was built. Uh, obviously, the, as since we've owned it, I mean, United was the first supermarket was in there. It was originally United and TG&Y, I believe, when it was first built. Shopping center was added on to over the years. Uh, in that, when we bought it, United was the tenant. Uh, then at some point, I don't remember what the year was, Homeland bought out United. And uh, uh, then at some point, Carter's bought out Homeland. And then Farmer's Market bought out Carter's. And they were the, the last tenant. And I, like most of the employees and a lot of people around, were stunned on when in a, uh, on a Monday Monday morning in October, I get an email saying they're going to close the supermarket in three weeks. Uh, so obviously, that kind of not knowing that was going to happen kind of put me in a little bit of shock. But within an hour, I was on the phone talking to obviously Carter's, uh, my brother-in-law, who's a banker in uh, Amarillo at Amarillo National Bank. He was calling his grocery store customers. Uh, he had contacts with Affiliated Foods, which they supply most of the grocers, the grocery stores in the whole region. 
and so we immediately, just within a few minutes of knowing that, we got on the we got on the uh, you know the wire and was trying to find people. Uh, also, I know some of you guys were busy with some of you. Uh, Stan Ralston was somebody that contacted. We uh, we spoke with several different chains. Uh, we uh, and then uh, Affiliate Foods had some people come up and look at the store too. The one thing that we did find out was the store was too big. It's an outdated business model. When you think about when that store was built, there was no Walmart Supercenter. There was no Brahms. There was no Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, Dollar General, all these little markets. I mean, at the time, that's the way grocery stores were built. Well, now that space is about 35,000 square feet. The, you know, from visiting with several people, the optimum is about 18 to 20,000 square feet. And so what they realize is you don't, you don't need all that to carry all those products because, you know, you get the Walmart carries a certain uh, variety and things and so the business model now and, and you're gonna find out a little bit more in a sec is you know they carry the top items and that's what they do they make the store smaller more efficient smaller footprint so um, and also we had other people we had also other calls when that went uh, when the store went out and had uh, <coughs> had a variety of different uh, people wanting to do things I think the one that probably would have been most financially viable for us was uh, had an offer to grow, uh, fill it up full of medical marijuana and grow it. And so it's like, well, <laughs> you know, that would grow a lot. But, uh, but you know, bottom line, I'm from Elkhart, Kansas. I'm a third generation farm kid. Uh, you know, we're from a small town. A grocery store is an important part of a small town. It's a quality of life issue. Guyman is, is a size community that needs more than just a Walmart Supercenter. And I'm not knocking Walmart, they do their things, but Gaim's a town that just it's just something that it needs and so again that's what we kept looking back to is we got to find something and of course obviously from day one I've still uh, with Carter's we I mean we were in contact all this time we've been visiting and the bottom line is if we're going to put money into the store which we're willing to and we wanted somebody that was come in and they and that would care about the community care about the store willing to put their own money into it, willing to put their own blood, sweat, and tears. That's who we want to invest with. And with that, I'm going to uh, introduce you to Justin D. Carter, and I'm gonna let him speak a little bit, and then I wanna present a letter to you at the end of, uh, end of the conversation, so. How you folks doing? Great, good, good, good thank you. Good, good. Pleasure to see all you guys here. Thanks for taking the time. and and letting us uh, come up and speak. Uh, where to start, you know, my dad owned that store. Tommy is my father. Um, I've worked for my dad since I was about five, picking up boxes on truck days, and this is what I've done. Um, we're country folks. We, uh, we own horses, we've ran cattle, we do groceries. That's what we do, so, and that's just who we are. Um, integrity's big with us. Uh, personal commitment is huge we had we didn't have any intentions on ever selling this store here uh, we built the store in Hugoton and we kind of had we'd had Dodge City Lamar we'd kind of grown r rapidly and and that's just my father and I working together a as a family and and uh, we had a large company come in before we had the chance to remodel and that's how the the sell happened when when I found out that um, this store was closing I was shocked um, I called them we reached out to them we tried to purchase it from them I talked to Brian I said that that store cannot close I mean why would you want to close that store there's a lot of opportunity there now was it perfect no uh, was it in a situation where it could be very successful you know absolutely not but it had the workings and I love the area this area, I graduated from Hugoton, um, so we're here. I have two young boys, two little cowboys standing about this tall. They're seven and they're eight. And so we're not going anywhere. So we're looking, actually we are looking at property right now as a family in this county. Uh, we, the ranch, small ranch we have right now is a little landlocked. So we're looking over here and, and it could be a good fit for us, especially with the, the venture that, that Brian has 
presented to us and the opportunity. I can tell you right now that, and like I told Brian, I said, Brian, and I didn't mean this in a bad way, but if we're going to do this, we need to do it right. I said the town deserves it. Think about the town. Think about something that has come in that has been new, that generates excitement, that has a personal touch with every generation within a family home. And that is your grocery store. It'll touch everybody from the day that they are born until their last, last breath taken. A grocery store is part of a community. It's part where you see each other. It's part where you talk to each other. It drives people to stay at home. It brings in people from your outer communities. You have a strip center that is, has a lot of different things in it. I mean, that, if, if you look at that thing on Sundays, that movie theater is packed. But like I told Brian, I said, if we're gonna do this, we gotta do this right. There's a lot of different opportunities, there's a lot of different revenue avenues that we can generate, that we can touch, that'll bring people from these outlying communities, Yarborough, Elkhart, Hugoton, Hooker. Right now, a lot of them are heading towards the liberal area or heading in different directions. Why would we not have them here? You've just recently established with the casino. Okay, so we're talking about the strip center. And I said, Brian, there's nothing for the young youth to do. There's nothing for things to do that where they can get together. We can tie in with that strip center. I said, why would we not cut this into three different pieces? Because we have different business ventures as well. Put in a grocery store, a fully remodeled grocery store from the floor to the walls. Everything, even the keyboards and calculators will be brand new. And I said, well, what about we put in a bowling alley? What if we put in four or five lanes of bowling alley with a little bit of a party center? Something to where these people have something to do. I mean, why would you not come grab something to eat, bowl a game or two, book a party, go to a movie? Okay, you've got, the big, you've got that big parking lot. You have everything there. This community has been a brick. It has had a stronghold. Guyman has had, I, I'm, I'm a country boy, so I've known about Guyman since I was a little boy, little boy. And we were in Denver City, Texas. I mean, from the brick roads to the hands that built this thing, we need to build a grocery store that'll wrap its arms around that and do something in this community, do something that has been done by local people, not coming in and build something big to where our money's going out. There's a time that some of these smaller towns have got to pull back together and build some things and reinvest in each other, and I think it's a great opportunity for us. And I've told Brian I'll do it. We're not going nowhere, and that store's not for sale. I've got a seven- and an eight-year-old kid. They love rodeoing, roping, bucking, and you've got the best rodeo school, 15 miles. This is a good opportunity for us. This is a great opportunity for us to kind of jump in the mix with Guyman. We apologize that the situation happened. We had no idea that that would ever present itself. Um, but we're excited. We're excited about the opportunity that it, it has provided to us and to you guys. And we understand that Walmart is here, and I think Walmart is a good thing to have because it also brings people in. We've, we've had stores. We, we were competed against Lamar, or in Lamar, Colorado, there's a Walmart there. There's a Safeway there. We're in Dodge City. There's a Walmart and a Dillon's there. Allow them to have their niche because they're important. But we can have ours as well. So I think if we combine that, especially with everything that the Mitchells have done out there, and then Anchor D Bank, and some of the things, that the, the restaurants that you have out on that end of town, I think there's just an opportunity. But it's got to be done differently. And I think if you'll allow us to work with us and we can do some different things, I think it'd be a different look. It'd definitely be a different look than what we've had in the last, since the 80s. But we just wanted to stop by and talk to you guys. Brian told me that we had the chance to come speak with you guys. And I just surely appreciate your time. If you have any questions, Brian has my direct number. And I welcome, I, you get what you see with me. So I, I welcome any of you guys to please, please feel free to call or ask anything. Thank you, guys. I appreciate Thank you. you. Well, he's kind of infectious with enthusiasm, isn't he? So, <laughs> uh, basically, what I would like to do is, uh, in visiting with Larry and stuff, present a letter to City Council. Uh, to uh, we've been working on this for a while. We don't. We've got an oral agreement, uh, like you say with Justin. There's still ideas every day. He was over here four or five hours a day. 
looking at stuff. So we've still got a lot of things in motion. Uh, from our standpoint, from the Mitchell families, I mean, we've just, everything's paid for for us. We this has been good, a great investment for us. We're not asking for anything. What I'm going to ask the council is if there's any means that you know he's talking about relocating here his livelihood uh, to get this up and going if there's any sales tax anything that you might be able to provide assistance to the carters coming in uh, that's what I'm asking again I'm not asking for anything for the shopping center or anything like that but anything that could help you guys have available because I think it's important for all of us to work together to uh, to bring something like this in so uh, anyway we are gonna have I know when I to visit with Larry a little bit we will hopefully have a full full executed lease here pretty quick but again there's just so much in motion that we wanted to and this was obviously the closest council meeting uh, to when we and so we want to come over so I don't know if I need to read this or just give it to you or you can read it That'd yeah you fine. Can read it. all right well, I put on my glasses finally I didn't do big enough fun on this. so okay to the Guyman City Council this letter is to formally request a sales tax or any other incentive that might be available through the Guyman City Council. Carter Supermarkets and the Northridge Shopping Center have reached an oral agreement regarding the former Farmers Market United Supermarket space. A written lease agreement is being drawn up. Several remodel and equipment bids have already been received with a few more to come in as there are still many ideas being considered. As the current space is too large for a single grocery store in today's environment, the design is being worked on for a grocery store, a feed store, I guess you forgot that was part of it, a feed store, part of the one, th and possibly a four or five lane bowling alley. As if you've ever visited Carter's Hugenton store uh, with the remodel, it's got a hardwood floor and things in it. I mean, it's really a classy looking space and that's exactly what we want to do here. And uh, like, like Justin said, this will be a business that Guyman and the entire area will be proud of. We appreciate the council's, council's time and consideration in this matter. If you have further questions, do not hesitate to contact Deke or myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, now you can tell them their three minutes is up, Sergio. Pardon? I said now I heard you tell them their three minutes is up. Well, it was bad. Yeah, I was going to say, sorry about that. I know. <laughs> and I, I guess no, I that's all right. if you have any questions, we're, we're glad to answer them or whatever you want to. We're good tonight. Yeah, yeah I, I think we're good. Right. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank good you. news. Here. Item four, approval of the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Living good? Aye. We have four ayes. Item five, discussion and possible action on execution of warranty deed to Hutchinson Oil Company LLC for the real estate located in the south half of lot 10 and all of lots 11 and 12 and block 20 of the Nance addition to the city of Guymon and approve the lease purchase agreement between Hutchison Oil Company LLC and the city of Guymon for the property located in lot one subdivision of block eight park place edition of the city of Guymon, Oklahoma. Yeah, we're, we're recommending approval. We've gone through, we've had a walk through. We think uh, the, the end product is what we had asked for. It's uh, first class construction we do have a few punch list items that we need to work through but i think we're ready at this point to to engage uh the company in swapping the land and entering into the lease agreement uh, behind the lease agreement you have an amortization schedule and that schedule shows uh semi-annual payments uh starting in mid-february so we'd have a our initial payment mid-february and then the second payment would be uh sometime in the fall in august or september uh, and as you know we've we've been able to secure an agreement with the shawnee tribe to help us uh, provide services to them and i think that's going to support our uh, financial agreement here in the lease any other discussion oh uh, one thing i know that when we did the original deal we had the right of, of uh, salvage on any of the old buildings. Yes. And the 
there's one building down there that the firefighters paid for that's their I think they call it their weight room or their workout center yes and they paid for that and built it and, and I want to make sure that if we need to put a an addendum on the execution of the warranty deed and I'm sure that the Hutchinsons will be more than happy to work with them on that but just to make sure that that understanding is the fact that if the if the firefighters group would like to salvage that building to move it somewhere else or whatever that's I think we have those salvage okay, I just want to make sure that was all in place I think that's part of the agreement and uh, we'll begin in the next 30 days to start <laughs> that's in the original agreement right. that was approved yes. last year I, right. just, I just want to bring that out and make sure we were still there have we cleared up everything with Mr. Latham? I believe so you never know but I, I think we check. have uh, did we get a check now, one of the problems is how the parking was draining. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I went over there and looked, and it's kind of draining back toward him. And I didn't, he said he talked to Sean about that, maybe. By well. Yeah, he, he made a request that. that we do some work in the easement. And obviously, this time of year, we're not going to do that. But we can, I think we can resolve his issue. Okay. Any other discussion? I make a motion that we um, execute uh, warranty deed of to Hutchinson Oil Company LLC for the real estate located in South Half S2 Lot 10 and all lots 11 and 12 Block 20. Nance Edition Item 5. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar. Aye. Living good. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have four ayes. Item six, discussion and possible action on selecting Multicon Construction as the successful and best qualified firm for the development of the Nash Soccer Complex and authorizing the acting city manager to negotiate terms of a construction management agreement with Multicon. Is this just for phase one? Uh, this will, we're, we're looking at. Let, let me back, uh, Sergio, did your motion include approving the lease purchase agreement or was it just the deed? It was everything in item five. Everything in item five. Correct. Just want to be sure. All right, back to your question. We we have included uh, in our RFP the idea of a base bid with an alternate, and the base bid would be for phase one, and then the alternate would be for the additional two fields. Hopefully, we can find a way to do the entire project. My recommendation would be that we try or attempt to do the entire project because uh, if you delay the second two, the last two fields, I think your construction costs and, and your mobilization and all of that will will increase steadily over the year or two that you wait. And so I, I would firmly try to work out an arrangement where we can, we can do the entire project. I think the committee, would, our recommendation is to just do phase one see how it's used in the utilization of the fields, <clears throat> which would possibly give us the ability to come back if it wasn't used to its fullest, to come back and maybe look at doing a baseball field or kids eating type fields. The only reason why is it's three turf fields. Uh, there would be a remobilization. I mean, I, I completely understand all that. I think Mr. Fulton and myself, Mike Gray and Sally, as we kind of talk through it, we would like to more or less concentrate on phase one it's going to give us the ability, if it's not utilized like we thought, to do more. Hence, in the name, originally we were the Nash Soccer Complex, and we changed it to the Nash Sports Complex with Mr. Petty's approval. And so that was just kind of some thought. That's, that's <clears throat> fine by me. I, I, I would just like to point out that we have submitted a grant uh, application for about a half a million dollars to do uh, one of the fields. and. We learned recently that that grant application is now sitting in the governor's office, and we thought that we would have by now an approval to forward that application <laughs> on to the National Park Service. Uh, I learned today that it might be as long as six months to get that approval. So uh, there's some mechanical issues here about logistics and that sort of thing and putting the project together, but I can, we can certainly proceed if that's your desire 
with phase one as far as negotiating terms and conditions with a construction management company and then go for their, from there. Because they did have a, a, they broke out their proposal between the base bid and the alternate. But we also, we have the ability to do some value engineering with them. Yes. Say if we decide that maybe we don't need the sidewalk track around the whole building, the whole complex at this time or something like well, we, that. We have the money raised for the most part for phase one. Yeah. Um, and I'm still saying 44,000 square foot yeah. concrete sidewalk. Might be needed. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm going to laugh at the walking track. I know I'm going to get beat up tomorrow whenever the garden club and something here about this, but there is a big push for that walking track. Well, it was just one idea. Yeah. It, it's, it's, think, there's a lot of things in there that could I think be. more than. Uh, you know, we can, if we can start showing some progress and go out, it's going to help us to go out and raise money on an individual basis. Um, we have some things planned uh, to try to get some of that done, too. But the, I was trying to think, too, the MidCon bid to shore that up. Sergio had asked me a question a little bit ago, but I'm trying to think who was in the online committee. Rick Sappington, uh, Tim Fulton, Sally, that went through the bidders. Right. It wasn't Tim. It was uh, Mike Ray. Mike Ray. Okay. Mike Ray and and uh, Rick Sappington, uh, Geraldine, and uh, uh, Sally, and then our staff guy here, Mr. Uh, Pete Hedrick. Pete Hedrick. Yeah. And, and the reason MidCon was chosen, we met early December. But I was trying to remember why they had that that advisory committee had chosen MidCon. I, I wasn't in the group, but they did, they held uh, interviews, they interviewed each of the four companies and it was their recommendation based on those interviews and the proposal that was submitted that, that uh, Multicon was the most qualified. Yeah. Uh, and, and our engineer has also suggested that we look at uh, Multicon as the construction right. manager. And a concern that I had and I brought it, brought it up to Larry, Mr. Mitchell earlier was out of these four, there was four on page six of 11 of the uh, city manager's memo. There was only one section or one uh, bidder with, with numbers. And I brought it up to Mr. Mitchell and it was explained to me that the, that the other bidders did not bid properly. Was that correct? I would not say that. I, I just think that they were not as responsive as the as the recommended firm. There was one other firm that did include a price for their construction management fees, uh, but the other two did not. Um, but, you know, when you, when you send out 50 packets and you get four, and I, I feel out of the four you have at least two that are well qualified to do the project, so I, I think you're on solid ground moving forward, and, and certainly we can, we can tailor the construction agreement and contract uh, based on the on the base bid or the entire project wh whichever you prefer yeah and I, I want to make it known like mr. Egger said there was a committee that was on this and then the uh, our engineers Kimberly Horn also recommended this firm correct there was a letter of recommendation from them so and so the first thing I will do if you if you agree with that recommendation is I'll schedule a meeting between Kimberly Horn, our engineer, and the, the uh, recommended uh, construction manager and go back through the construction documents and see if there's ways where we can save some additional money and, 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 and organize the contract around the uh, base bid that you're suggesting. And a, and, a thank, and a thanks to Mr. Murdoch, our senator, for sending the letter to the, governor. to the governor's office. So. Thanks to him as well. I would make a motion that we approve phase one. Second. I have a motion and a second. Peterson? Aye. Egger? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item Aye. seven. I, I need a motion on the construction management firm. I make a motion that we approve mid-con as our CMO. CMO. Second. I have a motion and a second. Peterson? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. 
Item 7, discussion and possible action on approval of real estate contract between Guarantee Abstract and Title Company, Rick Harbison, and the City of Guymon for the sale of the old library located at 206 Northwest 5th Street, also known as Lots 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, Block 5 in the original town of Guymon, Texas County, Oklahoma. You have a proposal, a contract for sale uh, from uh, guaranteed abstract and title for the old library. The, the appraisal, the original, the second appraisal was for 87,000. Uh, but in, when we discussed this item a couple months ago, the council did not set a minimum price for the sale and the offer in the uh, contract for sale is for 85,000 uh, as is condition. If we approve it, I'll make sure that that we there's a strip of land on the west side of it where the Hugh, Hugh Harmon Memorial's at. Is that going to be excluded from the sale? I, I don't know. I don't. I haven't surveyed this. I mean, they, he's got a legal description here. I don't know what he's covering. Okay. That 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 proposal includes that lot that that mini park if you want to call it a mini park i don't think it's a splash pad but there is a fountain there or a, there there's is a water. little splash pad little, little splash pad yeah yeah so <clears throat> if, if there's a requirement that the city maintain that or or keep that utilize that as a park then we may have to relocate it or do something uh, but that the offer the contract for sale includes that lot i know i've had discussions with the Harmon daughters and they paid for that and they wanted to make sure that it either remained somewhere and where the city could maintain it and, and honor the dignity of their dad who was our first city manager. Okay. Could we just you could I guess submit to Rick and ask him to cut that piece out and leave it in the city. We certainly could. You could amend the I mean that would be the easiest. I don't think my understanding from Rick was he just wants the basement. Because it's fire yeah. <laughs> we certainly could you could make that amendment or that suggested motion and I can go back and visit with him could we table it certainly can I make a motion that we table item 7 I'll second I have a motion a second Edgar aye. Alvedras aye Peterson aye living good aye we've got four eyes Item 8, discussable, discussion and possible action on approval of quit claim deed to Geraldine Sanchez, the sale of city property located at North 10, 910 North Academy for the sum of $4,000. Uh, yes, this is a vacant lot. Uh, Geraldine lives next to uh, the property in question. She originally submitted uh, a contract for $5,000, but she had some conditions applied to that offer that included an abstract and other services. And so I visited with her yesterday and she said she would be willing to offer uh, $4,000 and accept a quick claim deed and then she would take care of any legal issues that she might arise from that. Is a quick claim deed legal in Oklahoma? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that, that way any expense to clear title or abstracting any of that would be hers. Okay. Right. Staff recommendation? Yes. And it's to a what, 25 foot lot, it's too small. Yes, to it's not a billable lot. I'll make a motion to approve. Second it. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. <coughs> Discussion and possible action on approval of section 5311 program grant letter of intent between the Oklahoma Department of Transportation and the city of Guymon for 2021 operating funds? Uh, this is for our ride program and it's a annual renewal for the grant monies. I'll make a motion that we approve section 5311 program grant letter of intent, item nine. Second. I have a motion and a second. Yes, Peterson? Peterson? Here, aye. Alvedras? Aye. Edgar? We were having a conversation. Here and aye. <laughs> Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. Item 10, discussion and possible action on awarding bid for the removal of trash and weeds located at 2003 Northeast Street. Uh, 
our team was able to negotiate um, or arrange a written consent by Ms. Costner to go ahead and volunteer abatement so there'll be no consent so if we could or there'll be no contesting I'm sorry so we just need a ward bid and I think from since Terry we've Shores. been discussing yeah since what August Terry Shores is probably the best and the lowest okay thank you I'll just stay up here because the next one's the same thing so, so I make a motion that we approve <clears throat> item nine which I have a question I have a question on that for, mm -hmm. so there's under Terry Shores there's three quotes right yes but it's for quote one and two um, so Terry Shores combined bid was the 48 and the reason why the removal of the structures with 13 9 um, and it was for the removal of the trash and debris so when he did it, he we did not need uh, one of them, and I'm trying to find the notes. I'm so sorry. So it was total was for the 40, 45, 8 and for the thirteen nine. We didn't need the. And there's no expiration date on those quotes. There wasn't. No. And well, we did discuss it with him here recently, as far. Looks like the last time we number discussed three it with him. is far north pile, north end post behind shed, rock and bricks, post. Yeah, and all we, that stuff. Northeast White House, pile of wood, and then clean up south of. Yeah, because that white, that didn't include, that was the one that was actually that the was neighbor's the area. One. Yeah. Yeah. And some of that had even already been picked up. That's even some. One of those uh, trailer homes had already been removed. So, so he, his bid is for quote one and two. I'm sorry. So his bid is for quote number mm -hmm. one and number two. Yes. For forty-five thousand eight hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I second. I have a motion and a second. Who made the motion? Uh, Mr. Egger. Mr. Egger. Thank you. Peterson. Hi. Egger. Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. Uh, okay, we did that one, right? Item 11. Yep. That's 10, now we need to do 11. Uh, discussion, possible action on awarding bid for the removal of dilapidated structures located at 2003 Northeast Street. That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that's on there twice. Yeah. So no action on there? No, it's when they went for bid. They actually went for bid for both trash and they separated it on the agenda. Okay. But they went for bid for the same one. There's no action taken. Item 12 discussion and possible action awarding bid for labor, materials, and construction of the police department interior renovation to Guyman City Hall. We went through uh, almost the six day bid uh, announcement, uh, received one bid, uh, opened that on. January 6 uh, we're recommending that the council deny the or not approve the bid submitted by Wiley Hicks uh, our architect estimated the cost of the remodeling at about 50 to 60 thousand and the bid you received or the city received was almost a quarter of a million so we recommend that the council not approve it I make the motion that we do not award the bid of labor materials construction of the police department interior renovation to Guyman City Hall, item 12. A second. Have a motion and a second. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item, item 13, discussion, possible action on approval of budget amendment number one for the general fund for an increase of $27,000. Uh, this is for the library for the books. Uh, we. When we uh, put our budget together for the library, we had a uh, missing zero uh, in our budget. We had 3,000 allocated for books, and it's actually s supposed to be 30,000. So this is to correct uh, an error in a, our budget. Make a motion that we approve budget amendment number one for the general fund to increase uh, 27,000, item 13. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. 
<clears throat> item 14 discussion and possible action to discuss employment applications for employment of city manager including an executive session as authorized by oklahoma 25 uh, statute 307 make a motion to go into executive session second i have a motion and a second edgar Aye. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. Be back. Okay. I make a motion that we resume city council meeting. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Aye. 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 Got four eyes. Uh, no action taken on item 14. Uh, item 15, new business. Nope. Okay. Item 16 will stand adjourned as the Guyman City Council. Utilities or retirement? Utility board has a report. Utilities. Somewhere. Utilities? Let's do retirement. Let's do the retirement, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Bad case. Okay. Uh, we'll reconvene as the uh, special meeting of the Employee Retirement Board. Call this meeting to order. Item two, approve the minutes of the special <coughs> meeting of February 28th, 2019. I'm moving to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Item three, discussion and possible action on request for lump sum distribution to Cody Parlor. Make a motion we approve the lump sum distribution to Cody Parlor. Can I ask a question? What is, what is that? It's retirement. retirement. I guess let's wait for this to money. Yeah, the distribution. Yeah. You you don't you don't have any authority over the amount, it's just the distribution making the distribution. Well, we can do Edward Jones to the supervisor. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Edgar? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. We'll stand adjourned as the uh, employee retirement board. We will reconvene a special meeting of the Guyman Utilities Authority. Call this meeting to order. Item two, approval of the minutes of the special meeting, 12-10-19. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four ayes. Discussion and possible action to submit option of savings to the Oklahoma Water Resource Board from the possible refinance of the 2009 B Clean Water SRF promissory note. Right. There are two items here. They're both the same, different notes. Uh, the Water Resources Board refunded an issue and it resulted in some savings and there were probably 40 or 50 communities around the state with, with various loans outstanding uh, the letter is a little confusing. It gives you three options, and for the city of Guyman, option three really isn't an option. We we can't take the savings and pay off any notes. We we have too much outstanding debt to do that. But uh, I did talk with Rick Smith, and he recommended option two for both of these notes that we take the savings as a credit and and 
apply those to the debt service payments to the existing year and keep maintain the uh, remaining uh, maturity on both notes. Would, if you don't mind, what are what are the balances on each one of those notes? Do you know? Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, do you know? No, I do not know. One is one is like one hundred and sixty-seven thousand, something like that. I don't know what the other one is. The other's about eight million. Pardon? The other is about eight million. The other one's about eight million. Okay. Yeah, I, just, so. I was curious. It didn't have any dollar figures on it. No, it's a, it was a standard uh, boilerplate letter that was sent out, and uh, some of the communities got calls. Rick Rick sort of advised me that there there was a firm, law firm, in in Norman that were calling everyone and suggesting that they hire that firm to re refinance their notes and really is no advantage of doing that. Right. So our recommendation would be for both of these items, uh, option two. I'll make a motion that we submit option of savings to the Oklahoma Water Resource Board from the possible refinance of the 2009B Clean Water SRF promissory note, uh, option two. two on both of the notes and letter. I have a motion and a second. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Egger? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. <clears throat> Item four, discussion and possible action to submit option of savings to the Oklahoma Water Resource Board from the possible refinance of the 2008B Clean Water SRF promissory note. I'm sorry, we do have those notes attached. Uh, you asked a question. The, the second one is our, our original note was 16400000 and the other note was... Uh, one million three hundred and thirty-five thousand. They are. They're there. So they, the ten thousand dollars savings would not pay off that note. No. I was just curious what the balance is. Yeah. I'm not sure what the balance is. Yeah. I can't. Lynn, do you happen to know? I do not. That's right. fine. Not tonight. Make a motion that we approve agenda item number four on the two thousand and. 8B Clean Water SRF promissory note, and we elect to use option number two. Second. I have a motion and a second. Edgar? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. We've got four eyes. Item five, reports from city manager and council members. I've given you a lot of handouts tonight. Uh, one is uh, our financials for the month. Uh, we still we're continuing to to move in a positive direction with our sales tax receipts. Uh, you also have our budget book. Uh, we are still reviewing that uh, to make sure, trying to proof it to make sure we've got everything in there that we need to have in there. But that's your your bible, I guess, to to compare against our monthly expenditure uh, activity for the year. You also have a report from the fire chief. I mean, uh, police chief, I'm sorry. The fire chief didn't submit his report this month. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, we uh, also got a letter today, and you have a copy of that letter from the Bank of the Panhandle uh, making a commitment for the Nash Soccer Sports Facility uh, for uh, $150,000, and I also understand that we uh, may be receiving a letter later this week from o OPSU for uh, a commitment letter for the project as well. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Anything else from you guys? You have a, <clears throat> I asked them to give you all a copy. This is this month's led OML Legislative Committee's what happened in the board meeting, uh, the, the legislative agenda has already been pretty well put together from them, and I'll get you copies of that. There's not a whole lot of uh, things out there this year. Well, there are things that, that are going to affect cities. Uh, one of them is the emergency detention orders. It's up again. We're talking about that. And also the uh, ability to create a public safety district. And I... They're hoping that it'll finally pass this year. And there'll be some other things as the 
as the session goes on and I'll let you we'll keep you updated. Anything else? Okay. New business, item six. Nope. Item seven will stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.